Hey, how's everyone doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Well, today, it's been a while, but today I'm doing a movie discussion. A movie I just seen last night. It's the first time I've ever seen it. It's an old movie. Uh, it's called The Curse of Frankenstein, and it came out in 1957. So, uh, if you ever watch my movie TV discussions, uh, you know that I use my handy dandy trusty notebook. And this is no different. I have about five pages of stuff wrote down, and I'm not going to remember that. I can't remember one page of things. So, you're going to see me reading off my notes. I hope you're okay with that. <clears throat> now, I don't really do movie reviews so much as I just like to discuss them, just a quick overview of them, and uh, kind of things that I like or maybe don't like about them. And, uh... So yeah, let's get on with this one, guys. Again, it's The Curse of Frankenstein. came out in 1957. And I'm going to maybe butcher some names. I'm, gonna, I'm not great with names. I'm known for that. Okay, guys. It stars Peter Cushing as Victor Frankenstein. Hazel Court as Elizabeth. Robert Urquhart as Paul Krimp. Christopher Lee as The Creature. And it is directed by Terence Fisher. A quick basic outline of the story or plot synopsis is Victor Frankenstein is in prison awaiting his execution. We soon see the events that lead to this current state. From inheriting his family's wealth as a young man to his fall into insanity. That's just a quick basic outline of the story. I don't want to give too much away. Or do I? No, I don't. Anyway. Alright, here we go. Now we're just moving on to just basic discussions and things that I like and stuff like that. So, uh, the movie opens with a priest going to visit uh, Dr. Frankenstein in jail, awaiting his fate. I call him Doctor because it just sounds good, right? Uh, from there, the movie opens as Dr. Frankenstein tells the priest of the events leading him to his current day. And let me tell you, it can get a little dark, guys. Uh, from the opening, this movie is Craving Your Attention. The interaction between Dr. Frankenstein and the priest is a glimpse of what's to come. Uh, the music is typical of its day and time. It's very loud. Uh, it really wants your attention. It's very orchestrated. And uh, it, it, wants, it wants to follow <coughs> every moment in this film. And it really has a purpose uh, through the whole movie. Uh, anytime it's playing, there's really a purpose there. And it's uh, it, it, a lot of it is very intense. Uh, it makes you feel a little bit uneasy and a little bit of uh, maybe what's unsure, what's next. Uh, if you've ever watched a lot of these old movies like this, you know that they use a lot of that loud, orchestrated kind of music. And it's, uh, it's kind of a little bit overdone. Uh, and some cases in a lot of these movies but at the same time uh, it ends up doing its job so uh, the relationship between Frankenstein and Paul Krimp starts out simple enough then develops into something a bit more intense and conflicting I don't want to go too much into the details I know it's a super old movie and uh, you should have watched it by now all that good stuff, but I'll leave a little bit uh, for your imagination. Uh, there are bits and pieces of a couple of other characters thrown in the movie, but honestly, this movie focuses more on Frankenstein and Krimp, and uh, really the fall and demise of uh, Frankenstein has, you know, just kind of his life and uh, what happens. 
and again uh, just basically this is kind of what I like <clears throat> and there's a lot that I liked but you know you have to kind of try to remember all these things but uh I love the acting I love how very eccentric and dramatic they can be in old movies uh, it's really a true art and a lot of these actors from this golden era age are from like theater and they're from silent movies and stuff like that and so back then they had to learn how to you know overdo things and kind of oversell things and uh, be very eccentric and very dramatic and and, and everything and uh, just to kind of you know sell the moment you know to sell the performance and it bleeds over into some of these early films you know because that's what they were used to doing so but that's still it's really it's fun to watch because it's different uh, than what we get later on in films and tv and that so i really enjoy just kind of the overdone overdoneness <laughs> maybe of it all the score it's uh, i talked about that a minute ago the score it's very intense throughout the movie very well done as most of these movies are uh, it's just different uh, from what we have today. It's just a total different sound, you know, from what we get in movies today. I love the sets. Uh, I think they're fantastic. Uh, from the opening scene of the priest riding up in the dark on his horse on this dark, narrow path, uh, seemingly up the side of a mountain. Uh, he's headed to the... Uh, prison, the jail, uh, where Frankenstein's being held. Uh, it, it's just a really cool opening uh, to a movie, I think. It, it looks really good, and it kind of sets the stage for the whole movie. It's really, uh, really great. Uh, I love the the lab, uh, the science lab, the you know, and all that, and it's full of gadgets and lights and beakers and all kinds of things going on and all that stuff. Uh, it's very well done and also you have to keep in mind when this movie came out you know in the 50s so you know they're really they're giving us a lot in this movie as far as you know with the sets and the acting and the music and uh, just the overall uh, feeling and the atmosphere and the and the crit and uh, some of the stuff that you're gonna get to see in this old movie is just uh, it's really well done I believe uh, and matter of fact I kind of touch on that here I love how brutal a couple of moments are now I'm gonna give a little bit away here but not too much uh, we get a guy uh, that's been hung up in the streets there uh, to uh, decapitation you don't see the decapitation but you see the aftermath uh, to pushing an old man over a stairway banister and uh, killing him uh, to someone getting shot in the face someone getting shot in the face to someone else being shot and killed accidentally at the uh, at the end of the movie uh, to a guillotine uh, off in the distance in the very end credits uh, in the dark you just see this guillotine and it's being raised and it's waiting on its next victim that's really dark uh, there's some really dark elements uh, to this movie for its uh, for its release you know back in the 50s that's actually pretty ballsy uh, to have that in a movie back then um, now we will say this this is a slow burn film uh, just like, here's a few examples, Halloween 78, The Blair Witch Project in 99, Hereditary in 2018, The Witch in 2015, and there's a host of other movies like these that's a really slow burn. And I love that. If it's done correctly, I love it. Uh, you sit and wait with anticipation, awaiting the big moment. And uh, in most times, uh, in these movies here that I mentioned especially, it pays off. Um, we don't really even see the creature 
until about 50 minutes in. And I'm totally fine with that. Uh, the story, again, is more focused on Frankenstein and Crimp and, uh, and kind of all that leads up to the whole fiasco. So, uh, even though the, the creature is in there, it's not really focused so much on the creature. And that's kind of an interesting take on that to me. Um, and uh, when we do see the creature, uh, we get a little different take on it. I believe, you know, we all have uh, that image of what Franken, we call him Frankenstein, but he's really the creature or the monster. Uh, but, you know, we have our set image of what he looks like. And uh, he don't look like that at all. And that's really uh, interesting. I like the way that they uh, did that and then the route that they took with that. I think that's really great. So, yeah. Uh, very well done. Uh, the practical effects, the makeup, you know, uh, the prosthetics, all that stuff looks really great, uh, especially for the time. Uh, very well done. It's very interesting looking, and uh, I like it. The ending. I like how we're left. Uh, really, uh, we know Frankenstein's uh, fate really without seeing uh, the, the actual outcome. We know what happens at the end. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we know what happens just by what we see at the end. So, uh, yeah. Pretty good stuff. Uh, what I didn't like. Well, nothing. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, there was really nothing that I didn't like. Uh, I guess if I had to nitpick something, uh, you get a young, in the beginning of the film, uh, you get a young Frankenstein that meets a younger Crimp. I'm calling him Crimp. I guess that's his name. <laughs> Paul Crimp. Uh, you know, they meet, uh, when Frankenstein is just kind of a young man. He's probably around, I don't know, 18, 20, something like that. And, uh by the middle of the film or you know just shortly after you know time moves on in the film and uh now they're older but they both look like the same age and uh that's something that i kind of nitpick on movies a lot of times tv movies um uh, whenever you have a situation like that and time moves on but yet everyone looks the same or you know one person looks different the other one looks the same you know something like that uh, just kind of a little nitpick there. Um, I really think that's about my only nitpick or problem that I, I, I have with this movie. And I noticed it right as, you know, that scene comes up where you know, you know, where you see them older. It just, it was just that obvious. And, and uh, whenever something's that obvious like that, I like to point it out. Uh... I really like uh, that they did uh, the character and the folklore, the story, and all that uh, justice, and uh, it and it entertained me, you know. And it didn't have to have a creature, a monster, and all that right in the forefront uh, the whole time to do it. And I like a movie like that. Um, basically, just kind of wrapping up here, guys. If you like Golden Age films, horror, good suspense, storytelling, acting, black and white films, if you're tired of the over-budgeted, over-production uh, movies of today, uh, you want to see where we come from and what inspired uh, movies that we've enjoyed over the past 50 years, uh, go watch this movie. Go watch some older movies. All the way back to the beginning, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, all those years. Uh, go watch and, and enjoy some of these old movies because uh, you can learn a lot, you can see a lot. And uh, what's good about that is nothing's, uh, nothing's cliche at this point. See, these movies started everything. So nothing was overdone and cliche that we've seen a million times at this point. See, it is nowadays because we've been there and done it for the last hundred years. And so 
nothing's new anymore. And that's why everybody gets bored with movies and remakes movies and reboots movies and redoes this and redoes that and all that kind of mess. Because everything is old, been done, and cliche at this point. Back here, this is all original. This is all good stuff. And, uh, you know, there was a time when it was all brand new to these people that lived back then. So that's pretty cool whenever you stop and think about that. Um, go support these old movies, even old TV shows. Uh, now I don't as much as I should, and uh, I hope to uh, get better at it myself. But go support them. Uh, don't let them die out and appreciate where we came from, guys. Uh, because a lot, there's a lot of gems out there. There's a lot of good movies. Okay. Anyway. I really hope that you enjoyed this uh, kind of introduction maybe to this movie if you never heard of it. I uh, hope you enjoy kind of my little discussion and kind of how I felt about it and the things I loved and, and found interesting. And, you know, and I could go into a lot more detail and depth, most likely, with it. But we'd be here for an hour. Um, I say go watch it. I can't remember where I found it, but I found it on one of the, like, Roku or HBO Max or... Netflix or something. You can go find it. It's out there. You can even find it online for free if you dig far enough. Uh, matter of fact, I have it pulled up right now and uh, on, on a website. So, <laughs> um, anyway, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this long video. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you found out uh, something new with a different movie and uh, hope you go check it out. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Go check out the playlist on Mikey Sun TV. I have all kinds of stuff from movie discussions to cooking to book reading to just personal vlogs and different things and video games and uh, all kinds of good stuff, guys. You're going to find something cycling, working out, even throwing darts, family videos, all kind of good stuff. You're going to learn everything in the world about me and the things that make me tick and uh, enjoy life that I do. So anyway, guys. Inspire someone today. Inspire yourself most of all. And don't forget, get up, get out, get red, do it to it. And we'll see y'all later. Next time on Mikey Sun TV. Now go watch that movie.